Hello and welcome to this episode of the Business Spotlight. Today we are joined by Jez Barnett from Fabric Hair. Hi Jez. Hello Mark, thanks for inviting me along today. Absolute pleasure, thank you for joining us. So, for all of our viewers that are watching today and for those that are maybe joining us for the first time, what is the Business Spotlight? So the Business Spotlight is for us to learn a little bit more about business, a little bit more about Jez and his business specifically today. And for those of you that are either on the business journey already or thinking about getting into business or already that, on that entrepreneurship journey, get a little bit more expertise and a bit more experience about business in general. So, Jez, if you could just kick things off for us by letting the audience know who you are, what you do and how long you've been doing it for. Yeah, thank you, Mark. My name is Jez Barnett. I was a hairdresser from, uh, from a child, from sweeping up in family business learnt uh hairdressing well, over 40 years ago now and i was a happy hairdresser looking after clients running a salon for a very long time and then got into product development because i couldn't buy what i see was available in america and i wanted my clients to have this new technology so i ended up didn't plan to but I ended up into product development in 2008 we launched in 2009 as a company called kerastrate and it essentially, we call it care straight because it's a keratin treatment that can make the hair straighter. So instead of straightening treatment that would damage hair, and it might not affect you, Mark, and it won't affect necessarily everyone, but there's a lot of people who want what they can't have, what they don't have naturally. And a lot of people enjoy wearing their hair straighter, where it's curly, unruly, and they wanted something, and it wasn't available in the UK. And I was going to import for someone else, and... It took a long time and I couldn't get the health and safety. So I got frustrated and I Googled and it was called, it was, the genre was called Brazilian keratin straightening treatment. I got fed up and Googled and found this company in Brazil and they put me through to the MD who could speak English. And uh, we started speaking, they weren't exporting to Europe. So they, I said, well, I want to put my own name to the business because I can imagine what did I know about Made, selling someone else's product someone who didn't know was going to come and take it off my hands so I thought if I create my own name for it then and when that was started in 2008 and I've been developing ever since and then two years ago we thought the chemistry name was a little bit self-limiting a bit too literal so we rebranded to fabric spelt with a q so we could own the word because fabric's such a common word so We've expanded the product range in that time. And then also in that time, we launched a second company called Inalux, both within the hair treatment business, both focus on professional salons and then retailing through those salons. So been product development since 2008 and continually developing what these treatments and products can do. Wow, you have been a busy boy. <laughs> yep. Fantastic. Well, that's a great share. Thank you very much for that, Jez. So what would you say makes you guys stand out from other businesses within this sector? The innovation, the technology and the innovation. So essentially what we do with our brands, I work very closely with the chemist and I go to Brazil uh, usually once a year for a week and we sit next to each other in the lab and it's so different when we do a lot with Zooms and we do a lot sample scent and we talk about percentages, ingredients and all this. But when you're sat next to each other brainstorming, it's like two people, it's like having a room of people. So it moves so forward, fast forward. Um, but essentially, I'm what I get told that we're different is the chief decision maker is also the chief developer. So when we compete with the giants in the hairdressing product industry and they're very well-known names, the person is pushing it all forwards. It's not necessarily the person who's developing it. It's that very unusual. So it's actually the technology, what we can get these products to do that sets us aside. Brilliant. That's a fantastic share and such a great insight as well. So thanks for that, Jess. So... What would you say? I mean, if you was to just give us a bit of a like, I like to call it a whistle stop tour of what your journey's been like to date. So, you know, from when it all started to sort of like where you're up to speed with now. 
So I think being a hairdresser and running a team, uh, it wasn't a huge team, but there was at time, I think the largest we had in our family business was like 22 people in one hair salon. And we did a lot with a lot of training. We were investing in people. So there's things you learn along the way. So now as a manufacturer, I've got the experience behind me of, as a hairdresser, would I use it? Would my clients want it? Would they buy it, the retail products? Could I train it? Could I encourage my team to have it? And then could I sell it? So I look at all these aspects along the way. When I first started, of course, you don't know what you don't know. So one of the business courses I went on with Weller, who are our suppliers, says use your resources. So because we invest in people, I had a relationship with the chamber. So I went into the local chamber and I said, I don't know, but you will know. Can you help me, please? So they put us in touch with people who could do filling for us. They put in touch with other people who supply the bottles. And everyone knows someone. So I think when you first reaching out, you can't know this stuff. So if you can find some people who you like to work with, and especially as you're new, everyone wants to help someone brand new. I don't know what it is, but someone who's just starting off in business, we all remember someone helped us along the way. And we're very, I think we're very eager to help someone who's started their journey. So yeah. people helped us a lot. People helped us a lot. In the original times, my product development was just explaining what benefits I wanted to get. But I've studied. I've basically, I learned, the, I learned from a particular textbook I was recommended by a chemist that is written for hair chemists, scientists. Okay. And it's a great cure for insomnia. It's really not an easy read at all. It's, you can't read very many pages in a row. It's really hard going. But I've got, it's given me an understanding of the science of hair chemistry that there's not many people, in, that, from my experience, the people I meet who know what I know now. And my job when I'm doing education is to take the unknown to the known. So it's turning the knowledge into understanding. And once I've got the understanding of a problem, so some of our developments is because I now understand the problem in ways that I couldn't, I didn't know what questions to ask. I knew how to deal with the problem sometimes, but I didn't really understand the problem. Now I understand problems. The answer's sometimes fairly obvious. Yeah. If you're not looking in that direction, there's no chance you can come up with that answer because you don't know the question. Yeah, that's a very good point. Very good point. So I've learned to, at times, I've learned to ask very, very specific questions. And I recall a time when I wanted our main treatment to do, I wanted to improve the treatment. I said to him, can I bring in this other compound that we use in another product? And they said, no, you can't. And I said, it won't work, it's not compatible. And I asked them a very particular question then to understand what exactly wasn't compatible. And that enabled me to then ask them a very specific question. Well, if we went this way, we went around the houses to get it, and then say, that'll work. So if we miss out on that, that's not compatible. But we have, what job is that giving us? Can we get that from elsewhere? So the answer, the original question had to be a no. But I didn't really understand what I was asking well enough when I did. Then we ended up a yes and we leapt forward in progress again. Yeah. Wow. So some massive lessons that were learned along the way, yeah? Yeah. And I think that's it. probably is everything. It's so frustrating when we get no or we get an answer that is not doing this, but it may be, and I'm looking at myself very much at the moment when we're working with distributors and sometimes it's a little bit flatter than you want it to be because we sell where we can through distributors, especially in other countries, and they have their sales team going to salons. And if I'm not getting what I want from them, I'm kind of thinking to myself, I need to ask different questions. I need to understand more because we're at an impasse and I can't progress because... What is a frustration when you work with distributors? And it's probably every industry. They're meant to be your partners, but when it suits them, they behave like your customers. 
<laughs> yeah, isn't that true? Wow. Yeah, that's a great share. Well, and uh, it's the funny dance. Yeah, that's definitely one way to put it. Yeah, it's definitely one way to put it. Well, uh, that's some great learnings. And I mean, so that's brought us up to sort of speed of where you are now, Jess. So what would you say, first to ask you, what does the future hold and what does it look like? And I guess my main question is, what would you say would be your main challenges? Main challenge for, I mean, particularly with Inalux. So Inalux is based essentially around a treatment that repairs the hair in the colouring process. So traditionally, the chemicals involved with colouring damage hair and break hair, make it dry, weak, and all the things that people wouldn't want. And then some came out in 2014 with the technology that repaired it. And then 2015, with our factory, we created a protein-based technology to do it in a different way. So we are this tiny little company. The people who created it they hit the revolution when Instagram went bang. They went with Instagram, did everything right. Our technology is better than them. At one point, they were listed at 14 billion valuation dollars, but apparently not so much now. But still, they for, we, we lead on technology and we're so far behind on marketing, which takes money. So one of our competitors in the industry, they had a $25 million investment few years ago and they spent 600,000 on one TikTok campaign. Wow. And they blew up. So this year is very much about organizing. My business partner left last year and we're kind of looking at where we need to be. We're looking at updating our website. A lot of things we're looking to update, sorting out the product um, ranges and everything this year to next year really be able to market it. Um, but we are very aware that business, you can only really cycle your money around. You've got to take, sell it, create some profit to reinvest and go again and again and again, if you can. So we're kind of looking at the moment, I'm looking whether, because having 100% of the business that is moving slowly, it's a bit like it's dragging and you think, well, actually I'm going to start talking to people, maybe get some investment, because if we can outperform the competition, but we can't market ourselves. It's a slow growth. Sure. And if we're in service, then the distributors and sellers need us to be better at our marketing, make it easier for them. And this, if we can produce a better product, which we do, we're not doing anyone any favors by, we need to get bigger to do our job properly. Yeah. So the, the future is probably about getting investment and getting get some more uh, consultants, more coaching to learn the things that I don't know. And our operations director, she's been with me 22 years. So she started as a Saturday assistant, Sarah. Everyone should have a Sarah. Um, but as I develop, the idea is that she develops with me. She, we run the business together. So we need to get someone in to take the stuff that she can coach others to so that we can develop further. And it's about keep on developing the products, keep on taking that technology. So there's no point where you can say, well, it's good enough. You know, someone once described hair as being, once it grows out, it's no longer alive. This is all dead stuff. Yeah. It's only alive when it's fed from the blood supply. So someone said it's biologically dead, but chemically alive. So you can influence it. Yeah. So there's no point you go, oh, that's good enough. It, it just couldn't be because it's organic substance, so we can do so much more. So mine's always development, always development, but at the same point, got to get more people known about us. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. I mean, that's a great share, and thank you very much for that. It's really insightful. So, yeah, that's uh, going to be really good for some of our viewers and listeners today. So thanks for that, Chess. Moving on to yourself then, as the business owner, I mean, what would you say has been your biggest lesson today that really, you know, really stands out for you whilst you've been running businesses? Um, it's, I always, and I still believe that the best thing is to surround yourself with people who know what they're doing. They save you from a lot of mistakes, but also have people in the team who are so naive 
they don't know no they don't know oh let's no it's not done that way i think you need that freshness um to it uh lessons are it doesn't get any easier it doesn't so far from my experience don't it doesn't get more time off it doesn't get more work life balance because as one gets better as we learn as we learn more it makes you hungry or well, it's made me hungry and more ambitious to achieve um ambitions at the start were quite humble now we developed it so far without getting this global size of business so actually my ambitions are less humble and more ambition um i think um so, sometimes you have to look back at what you've dropped because you have a great idea and you move forward away from it and actually you've got to completely go back to say we've changed but what did we drop along the way is there value in because it nothing stands still the competitors will i think will in any industry if you stand still eat you up um but i think it's for for me it's trying to I suppose you look back and you learn there's times to spend money very badly in the chasing of it. We grew very quickly in the early days and thought, well, to really grow, we now we have to spend everything we've got or more. Yeah. So there there wasn't very much humility in that. Um so I think I've over the years I've kind of probably spent money badly. Yeah. Um, but you, you don't know. You don't know to, it's about surviving it, I guess, and trying to learn the lessons. Yeah, no, I think that's some great advice that you've given there. And I think, you know, just to pick up on a few parts or a couple of things that you've mentioned, um, you're right, you know, everything's always evolving. I remember someone mentioning to me that, uh, you know, if you was to go to a river and stand at the same spot and look at that river and then go back the following day, exactly the same time, that that piece of water that you're looking at is not the same piece of water so it's that point that you can try and go back to and stand in exactly the same position but you're not going to be looking at it because it's not going to be the same and you mentioned also about the ambition side of things and I think it was really key I think one of the things you mentioned was that you used to be quite humble and I've often heard people talk about ambition and goals and I think it was along the lines of if your goals don't scare you then they're not big enough and I love that. I think that's brilliant. So, uh, yeah, that's some great shares. Thank you so much for that. So yeah, it's hard to mark when, let's say, we're a relatively small business and it's all comparable. But I consider we're a relatively small business and we're the team. I mean, like, it's hard to, um, to continually tell them how great it's going to be. And I wouldn't want to, but they've got to see, I think they've got to see that it's not normal. If you want exceptional from the team, and it can't it can't be normal. They can't believe it's normal because why would they get up and put everything into it if they don't see the dream and the vision? The other thing I've learned when my business partner left, he was very task orientated. Yeah, and I'm much more mission orientated. Yeah. So we did a thing when he left. We worked with the team looking at Simon Sinek's Start with Why and those sort of less uh, teachings. And they said to me, it's got to be your why. We've got two separate businesses that are aligned. But they said, yes, it's got to be your why. You're the driving force. Because I'm like, I work for the company. But they said, no, it's got to be your why. Because it's all it's always going to be your vision that's going to come to through at the end of it. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think, and that's a great book, by the way. Simon Sinek's uh, Start With Why. I mean, he's done some great stuff. Some of his TED Talks are legendary. But um, but yeah, you're right. It's that having that vision and being the visionary to be able to sort of set that vision for the company and for everybody that's working within the company. So another fantastic, great share. So thanks for that, Jess. So look, we're going to go back in time now. We're going to okay. uh, we've got a time machine. We're going to jump in that time machine and we're going to go back in time. And we're going to speak to a younger version of Jess. It's going to be an 18 year old Jess we're going to be speaking to. But you're going to have one opportunity to give one piece of advice to that 18 year old Jess, what would it be? Uh, I suppose there'd be two really. One would be don't be in such a hurry. Yep. Um, but 
don't work for don't work for somewhere where where you're not being mentored yeah like find your mentor and then once you've once you've uh once you've really done everything you can then find your next mentor so a lot of times when i look at a lot of my decisions was even when i was a manager and then a partner i there's I've learned, and why I love working with consultants and coaches, because I love people who can show me ways that I don't know, questions that I should be thinking of, but I haven't had the experience. So I think as, if you find a mentor and you love being in their company and what they're doing, you're not in a hurry because you're hungry for the learning. And I think it's, it's about understanding. It's not about knowledge, it's about understanding. So in my industry, in hairdressing, a lot of us didn't love schooling because you're learning for you're learning stuff and you don't understand why it's a memory game it's not an understanding thing so str really struggle at school get bored very quickly in our industry we have a lot of people with neurodiversities they don't learn in the same ways but they come into an industry like hairdressing and they're at home they love the environment feels like a party every day just to be in the environment of the salon and you get paid for making people look and feel fantastic. So it's so rewarding, but it's all about the understanding. So I think when you find a great mentor, they take you on that journey and they they kind of want to push you up and out and they don't mind you move on because they've been part of your gentle, the right mentor won't mind if you outgrow them because they want to see their student fly. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's some great piece of advice there. And I think, you know, if only we had that time machine, eh, Jess? If only we had that time machine. But uh, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of uh, our younger audience watching today that's going to that's going to resonate with them. So thanks for that. It's a, another great share. So, Jess, what would you say it is that, and I ask this question a lot, and I'll get some varied responses from it, but what is it for you personally that really you know, really fires you up? What is it that really inspires you to do what you do day in, day out? I think, um, I mean, you're no one without your team. I've, uh, we've got a small team. I mentioned uh, Sarah's been with me 22 years and she's the how to my why. So for, if you, the more you have someone who's a why, mission-driven person, you need to, and my business partner was John before, he was that, a brilliant, brilliant brain for any guy um so but yeah the more you've got someone to support that doing the how the more far forward you can go with the why so i think it really is the mission that inspires it's like why and i suppose when i was a hairdresser i was thinking i'm competing with anyone else who cuts or colors hair why i've got to earn the right for someone to come back to me so if I don't deliver today in a way that makes someone feel like I'm the best they've ever had, then I don't deserve them to come back to me. So that was always the mission. Like, and so you never not motor. And I always said as a hairdresser, and you'll go to see your hairdressers, your barbers, and you'll go in and they perhaps they've had a night out, perhaps they've got a cold, perhaps they've got troubles at home, and you sit in their chair and they switch it on. They step into the opportunity and they switch on and they park all of the problems. And depends on your relationship with them, you might have a real buddy relationship with them and you're laughing about the same things. And they can say to you, late night, last night, and you say, yeah, but concentrate my hair, thank you very much. <laughs> and But they step up. So where I'm more mission-led and now like I say my business partner's left, there's always the mission about how and I've got to deliver products that will deliver beyond anyone else's otherwise we don't deserve our space we don't have that fortunes in marketing that can take a me too product and make that number one yeah. so we've got to make a number one product and find a way of building it through performance first and user experience that's and that never stops trying to understand how we can do that better Wow, that was uh, 
probably one of the best answers I've ever had to that question. So thanks very much for that, Jez. Another and you just got to not share. want to ever sleep a good night's sleep again. <laughs> so just to wrap things up then, Jez, um, if people want to find out more, which I'm sure they will, what would be the best way to them for them to get in touch with you? You know, have you got a, what's the best contact details, website, that kind of thing? So you can reach us at jez at fabrichair.com, spelled with a Q, or I'm on Instagram as jez underscore Barnet. Um, you can reach out to us through Interlux, through Fabric. Um, websites are pretty cool. So a lot of people, a lot of information there. Um, LinkedIn, all the places. Um, and if there's something that I can be of service to someone, if they find something useful, they want to ask me anything, then please put but a pleasure if someone reaches out and has a look at his thing you know what you're looking for investment that i'm just my cup of tea maybe who knows um but we i was interesting i was at, very quickly i was at um a packaging event with sarah and we we're looking around the different sort of packaging options and we found this company and we stopped by it was at an exhibition we were there for an hour or more and their tagline was large enough to cope, small enough to care. And I thought, you've got me with that. And like they just said, look, Jez, we need to learn about your business and then we can look after you. Wow. And I think that is something as we're moving in the next year or so with people we work with, we're like, we need people who actually want to partner with us to because we're not a, we're not a loyal no and that's we the, need, tell you what small business and it's all personal so we yeah. need people who are actually going to say i want to be part of that yeah no i think that's good i think that strap line that you've just mentioned there reminded me of uh what is it people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care yeah so yeah I think we've got an obligation people spend their money with us whether it's consumers or hairdressers or distributors and we've got an obligation to do the je best job that we possibly can and when we look at our direct competitors there's lots of bits you can unpick the threads there's lots of reasons why we are in our technology and we can be in a business better so we need to grow into and live up to that it's great seeing it but if it's just somewhere in the future it is a wish so actually we and I suppose it can't rest until you've delivered on the promise. Yeah, absolutely. That's brilliant. What a way to end the show. Jez, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, thanks for being gentle with your questions. <laughs> well, I do try. I try to be as gentle as I possibly can. So thank you very much for joining us. For everybody watching, that's Jez Barnett from Fabric Hair. Thanks for joining us, Jez. And for everybody watching, that's a wrap. That's it. Until we see you next time. Bye for now.